Robbie, thank you for taking your time to come and sit with us and have a chat. Talking about you as a goalie coach, tell us a bit more about your experience, how it's been for you and just things like that in general. Um, yeah, well, I had a good playing career uh, at non-league level. I wasn't good enough to be, to be a pro. So um, I retired at 45 playing. But at that stage, I was coaching um, as well as playing and doing a bit of management. And I sort of stepped down the levels. But I, I played sort of Southern Prem level, West, West, uh, Western League, so sort of step three level, um, mainly in the 80s and 90s. And then I just started getting into coaching, enjoyed it. Um, and I got a job at AFC Bournemouth in the Centre of Excellence. Uh, and then I set up my own goalkeeping school called Between the Sticks. And it sort of took off from there. And then I got into working for the FA as a tutor, delivering courses for you know grassroots uh, coaches that want to learn a bit more and the processes of delivering sessions and sort of just snowballed from there really and uh, and and then I got a job at Paul Town um, was there for six seven years really successful um, coached a keeper called Nick Jennings who went on to be national um, goalkeeper of the year and then uh, from there I went to Weymouth and obviously started there had a double promotion and then that's when I worked with the gaffer and Tom. Uh, and then uh, I was at Weymouth and then the gaffer offered me to come to Aldershot, which is a no-brainer for me. So, so any experience of you bringing it here and how have you found settling in here? I, I absolutely love it. You know, I, I really do. I'm, I'm such in a happy place. Uh, the, the club itself, I've, I've always liked Aldershot when I vi visited as you know, opposition. Uh, it's got a good feel to it. Um, and the fans, uh, they've made me feel really welcome. Obviously, I know Mark. I've didn't know Coops, but, you know, great guys and Sam and, you know, it's, it's good staff. And, and I know Mark and Tom really well, so I know how they operate. So, really, it was it's just stepped in. It's just, like, flowed perfectly for me, you know, so. And let's talk about you a bit more and your goalkeeping, your remit and your, you know, your work with other goalies. How have you found working with our goalies and how do they reflect on other goalies you've worked with in the past? Yeah, I mean, uh, the goalkeeping union is, is a special one <laughs> and you've got to be a bit fruit bat um, uh, as a coach as well. But no, they're, they're, they're fantastic. Um, obviously, you know, Mitch didn't have a goalkeeping coach, um, so he has to sort of coach himself, which is, you know, it's, it's really hard. Uh, so me coming in was like a, you know, fantastic for him because then he can just concentrate uh, on getting um, fitter and sharper and he didn't have to concentrate on... Uh, doing the sessions um, but he's he's done a good job uh, with the youngsters um, with Ryan uh, and Cal and obviously Harvey they're all progressing really nicely uh, I've stepped in really nice uh, they love the training um, I love working with them um, and I talk about the goalkeeping bubble and so we've uh, you know we, we look after it and uh, we work hard on and off the pitch um, yeah they're a great bunch they really are and obviously when Loz come in um, you know, I've, I've worked with loan keepers before. Uh, he's just sort of settled in and he absolutely loved the training and the setup and what Tom and Gaffer have, uh, have put in place here uh, with everything. And uh, the facilities are good, as you know, at Gordon School. So, uh, yeah, it's sort of like, um, yeah, it's brilliant. I, I love it. I love working with them. They're great guys. Unbelievable. You spoke about it as well. You said you have such a passion for the goalkeeping coach and really want to impressed and also do well for yourself and the goalies you work with as well yeah i mean people that know me um you cut me in half it'll have gk written in it i i most probably are a little bit over the top in protection you know but i i always have a close relationship with my keepers um some coaches don't agree with that because at the end of the day i might have to drop them that did happen you know because obviously as you know mitch mitch was dropped and lost come in but his attitude has been phenomenal and um He's, you know, a real good professional. You know, I have to manage that um, as, as his coach. And, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it, it's, it's everything. It's, you know, you've got the psychology side of it, which is massive for goalkeeping. And then you've got the physicality, you've got to look after your body, and then you've got the technique and then the tactics. You know, the goalkeeping role is, is a special one, it, it, you know, and uh, you've got to approach it in such a different way and manner. Um, and that's where I come in. You know, um, I, I, I obviously talk to the, the gaffer and Tom and we sort out the sessions, like prepped up the last two days for obviously the next game. Um, and, and that's what it is, you know, just planning, 
um, and make sure everything's in place so the keepers don't have to want for nothing. And hopefully, you know, since they've, they've been here, they've enjoyed working with us. So, uh, yeah, so it's good. Yeah, I'm loving it. It's good. Because, of course, with the goalies we've got here, there's mainly two different situations in the sense that when Loz was here, you had Mitch and Loz competing for the number one spot, putting a bit of uh, pressure on Mitch. Also, you've got the three young goalies, Harvey, Cal and Ryan, yeah. going out on loan and getting experience elsewhere. How important has that been for you to manage and also make sure they're all progressing in their careers? Yeah, that's a great question, Harry, because um, I love developing youth because, they, you know, they are the future. Uh, and we've got some good talent there in those three. Uh, obviously, my first role in the first week was to get them out on loan, uh, which I did. Um, and they've, they've had a few chip, you know, chop and changes because generally when a club's in trouble with a keeper they've either been injured or like with covid and they just want them from short term but i'm, I'm always trying to to push them into the highest level i can get because obviously we want to you know train for us you know for our, for our future keepers and you know ryan and cal and our harvey with, with the the uh, under 18s in place of the 23s just been selected for the england schools uh, it's going out in february so that's a great you know little tick in his box and good for the club um, you know, and, and Ryan is out um, at Beaconsfield at the moment, which is Southern Prem, and Cal is out at Limington, which is uh, Southern, South and West. Because I've got a lot of contacts, and obviously they know, you know that I've, I work with decent keepers, so clubs contact us all the time. Uh, so there's always options to get them out on loan, but I'm always looking to try and get them to the highest level I can because they need to be tested. I don't like the keepers sitting on benches getting splinters in their backside. And, you know, they, they've got to be out learning. You don't learn sitting on a bench. You've got to get out and play. So that's that's my one of my real big things. I like to see my youngsters out. Yeah. And, of course, Mitch and Loz now. Obviously, Loz joining Stevenage full-time. Mitch has now stepped up to the number one position. It's important, given the start he had the season, he's ready to step in. I'm sure you've had a play, big part in that. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, the number two is the hardest role for a goalkeeper. Uh, it really is, because you've got to maintain... Uh, your fitness, you've got to keep on top of yourself, you, you know, because that call, you might get injured, get sent off, you've got to step in straight away. Um, and not, with loss coming in, it's happened to me a few times now where I've had loan keepers come in and they're sort of like maybe third choice with the club that they're at the, and the, the parent club um, and then playing um, out in, for clubs gets you out, gets you out there. So then other clubs see you, scouts, and then that's what's happened with Loz. You know, he's done well for us, very well for us. Um, and he's loved it. And it's reflected on his performances. And then Stephen has just come in and, 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 and taken him. And I'm so proud of him. And obviously, he's, he's done brilliant. He's worked so hard. He deserves that opportunity. It's, I'm gutted because I've lost a good keeper. But I've got a good keeper in Mitch. You know, Mitch is very experienced. And he, and he is... An, real athlete he's fit as a butcher's dog you know he ain't got an inch of fat on him or nothing he is a true professional and i've got a lot of time for for mitch so he's he's got his opportunities uh now loz is gone and, and that's what we're going to try and you know hopefully he can sustain and, and keep his place you know can you touch on the psychology side of it as well how important is that to ensure mitch is ready to step back in in the number one spot particularly with main head on saturday yeah i mean the, the thing is with the psychology it it you can't really teach it. It's, it's, you, you've got to be strong. Um, I mean, I've, I've had the opportunity of working with top goalkeepers and goalkeeping coaches, uh, and the psychology is the massive. So you, you, don't, you don't rest on your laurels. You don't sort of, like, sulk about mistakes. You, you've, you literally got to analyse it, think, right, what could I have done a little bit better there? Could that decision have been a bit quicker? Should I use a different technique? Once it's done and you've, you've come to the conclusion of the answer... That's it. You just draw a line in it and you move on. And, and you're only as good as your next game. So that's what's really hard for Mitch because, it, you know, it, there was a few, you know, sort of slight sort of little uh, glimpses in his performances, but he never had the opportunity to, to put them right, you know, but he, he has now. So it, it, the psychology side of it is massive, you know, especially at this level and higher, you know. And, uh, you know, we, we just keep it, um, you know, good, good vibe, you know, we talk about it, the tactics and everything like that, and, and then you just sort of, it all slots in place, and then you just cross that line on Saturday, and it'll be in the zone. It will be in the zone.
You spoke about it as well. Obviously, the young goalies who go out on loan, you know, they might think, you know, this is my opportunity to show what I can do and go back. And now they've got you in place, it'll be something you can look at with them, like you spoke about off camera as well, and reflect on how they can improve and how they continue to, you know, eventually push for the number one spot here. Yeah, I mean, re reflection is, is quite big in goalkeeping. I, all my sessions I, I, I video on, on my GoPro, uh, and I've got a YouTube private channel which the keepers then access, and I tell them to look at this, look at that, or I might do individual clips and say, just look at this, and slow it right down and then send it to them, and so they analyse it. The clubs with Ryan and Cal, they send me the clips um, on their games because it's obviously impossible for me to get to every game, but I try and watch as many as I can. I've seen you know, them all play. But, um, yeah, so I'll watch the clips and then we'll look back and, and mainly it's about like, how are the goals conceded and if there's anything you can do to, like, you know, positioning, could you come down the line, could you, you know, done anything just to sort of put you in a better position to make the save. So, um, they're, and they're sponges. And if you're working with sponges, it's easy because you just give them, you, you, I've got the tools, I'll just say, look, and they, they do the rest, really, you know, because uh, I can see who's looked and who hasn't looked. Uh, but they always come back and then I'll ask them the question and say, oh, what do you think? And I know that they've watched it and studied it because they come back and generally keep us pretty honest. They give you the right answer, you know, and, and if there is something you think, well, no, you look at it this way, and they say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I didn't realise that. So, yeah, that's when the experience and knowledge comes in. But, yeah, um, yeah, the, the, I think the video and analysis is, is massive for goalkeeping. Yeah, that really is. Because, of course, primarily you've come in as goalkeeper coach, but, of course, with our kit man leaving as well, you've sort of taken that on as a bit of a role within your role as well. But also, we, we spoke about it as well. You, everyone chips in and does what they need to do to make sure the kit's all organised and everything, but you do focus primarily on the goalkeeping side of things. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we do, everyone really does muck in you know we, we haven't got m massive staff I mean I, I live in Dorset so I, I get up at five in the morning I, me and Tom driving together because he lives down by my way um, and then we get here about 20 to 7 and then we start planning our day sessions and that and then um, George brings the van from the stadium with all the training kit on and all the kit then I take it down I'll put all the kit out uh, all the training so I look after all the training uh, you know, clothing, uh, all the cones and everything, the balls, uh, the mannequins, make sure they're all blown up. And so I'd look after all that. And um, and then I'd do my goalkeepers. And then, like, in a minute after we'd finished here, I'll, I'll, because I'd be finished, I'd put all the stuff away in the tubs. That goes back off. George takes that back. You know, he's our physio. And he takes it back. And then um, uh, it's all cleaned. And there's volunteers there doing that. Wherever you look at this club, whatever section, you know, there, there's volunteers and there's people that absolutely love the club and you can sense that. And so, you know, we just want to work hard as we can to, to, to help them enjoy it more. And, um, you know, I, I, I got great banter with the, the players. I mess about quite a bit and, you know, a bit, you sort of playing tricks on each other all the time, you know, kins and, you know, they're, they're, they're just a great bunch and we, we get on really well. And it's just a great vibe. It's a great place to work. They're loving it. And um, it's because you, you look around and everyone's doing something. You know, it's, it's not my job maybe to do this or it's not George's job or it's not Tom's job or the gaffer's job. But they will do it because it makes the cogs turn. You know, and, and that's what you, you can't... You have a machine and one cog's not turning. You ain't going to get the process, are you? So... We all chip in, we all do that. So, yeah, so you, it's a good question. But, yeah, they're, they're brilliant, the, the guys. And just to finish off, goals and targets as the goalkeeper coach for the rest of the season. Oh, well, many clean sheets as possible uh, in victories, obviously, because uh, if, you, if you don't concede, you don't lose. But um, it's, it's just basically getting um, the performances. Um, I always set targets for each game, what I'm looking for, and as long as we keep hitting them, then the keepers are doing their job. I'm doing my job. Um, you know, you're not going to save every shot. You're not going to catch every cross or whatever. But you know, if you if you're doing the right things and and you you know and you're not making major errors, then um, you know it's a it's a win-win in it. So, but that that's what I'm looking for is to clean sheets and as many points as possible. Are you in with a shot? Look below for more information.
Click here for the next video. Click here to subscribe.